Mike, before we get serious and going on um, Dominique Bowman's hire and discussing that, who do you think would last longer participating in a Razorback practice? Would it be you or Clay Henry? <laughs> uh, I don't think either one of us would last very long. I am old, old, old. I, I told people a few years ago, I don't feel much different than I did 30 years ago. In the last two or three years, I don't know, when you hit 70, it just starts to change. And you, <laughs> you're crazy if you don't notice it. I'm not, I'm not going to get physical with anybody. Mike, I said I'd make it about halfway through stretch line, and then I, I'd be done, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I walk. I don't run anywhere. <laughs> So, so, Mike, we're happy to have you and the rest of your pick. <laughs> excuse me, the rest of your Pig Trail Nation team partnering up with us here on ESPN Arkansas. Your your pot your your show with Alyssa Ask Mike is now going to be on our Hit That Line podcast network, which is also going to be a great feature with this partnership. And uh, you weren't asked this earlier this week, but now you are going to be about Dominique Bowman. I'm sure you've touched on it uh, through social media and whatnot. But what do you think about Sam Pittman going with Dominique Bowman, the former Marshall cornerbacks coach? It sounds like a, a typical hire that he would make. Young guy, uh, good recruiting con- uh, credentials, a guy that's at least got a reputation early in his career of, of developing players. I mean, this is exactly what they sort of had with Sam Carter, except Carter had less experience. And the whole thing with Sam Carter's got people bum puzzled. I mean, they're like, what's going on? I had a guy in the mall yesterday. Uh, he, he was like, Sam Pittman can't keep any coaches. What's wrong with this guy? I'm going, what's wrong with him? Nine wins? Two years after they had back-to-back two-win seasons? You're going to ask what's wrong? Uh, at some point, I think fans are going to settle in and say, well, we're not worried. And whatever he does, guys hitting the portal, coaches leaving or whatever, he, he's got it under control. Um, the thing with Sam Carter that I was told, you know, Barry Odom brought him over from Missouri. He was a young guy, didn't have a lot of coaching experience, but he, but Barry was right there with him. And, you know, he just developed immediately. They were very happy with his coaching. Everybody I've talked to said all of those cornerbacks got better under him. He's a great recruiter. There was just one problem. He was over the top in his coaching style. Now, look, I like that old school stuff. That's that's what Coach Musselman is. He's old school, man. He will get in your face. He's dressing you down. Uh, that's not Sam Pittman's style. He said when he got here, we're going to coach guys up, not down. And so there was an issue there. And they talked to him. They liked him. They liked the results. But it was like, can you change this? Can you tone this down a little bit? And and I think they all came to the conclusion, no, this is Sam Carter. And there's nothing really wrong with it. He just probably would be better and prosper in another situation. Yeah. Well, Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin, you ever been around his dad? I was 40 <laughs> years ago. I still remember the old days when you could watch the whole practice, they didn't kick you out after 20 minutes. I'm standing 40, 50 yards away from Monty Kiffin and watching him go after guys like Donut Richardson, and I wanted to walk out of that place. So I think he's going to be fine where he is. And then Arkansas brings in a guy with similar abilities, recruit, develop, or whatever, but maybe he's more in line with the way they like you know, these guys to be coached. So I think everything's going to be fine. Don't freak out. The man, the man's results speak for themselves. I mean, come on. I mean, who thought they were going to win nine games two years into this thing? I don't think that most fans understand the low point that we hit under Chad Morris. I don't think there's ever been maybe back J.C. Futrell or whoever he was, maybe back in those days, he had two back-to-back seasons like this. But in the modern era of Razorback, from the 30s on, there's never been two years like Chad Morris. And we've gone from that to nine wins in two seasons. I still can't believe it. Yeah, Jamal Ashley was another one that uh, was a change uh, in since – in this week with with the coaching staff well, what's what's at the root of that change and in, in reportedly and in, in every headline is he was fired by sam pittman 
everything is about recruiting, and, the, and we've heard that he, he wasn't recruiting at the level that Sam Pittman wanted. Is it just that simple? His, his, uh, his recruiting didn't, didn't meet muster? What, what happened with him, and, and where will they go with this defensive line coaching position? It seems like that's what it is. But the, the one thing that bothered me, guys, was normally, and, and Tom Murphy wrote that story, and I'm not going to call Tom up and ask him, did you talk directly to Sam? Did you get somebody that talked directly to Sam? But the wording of that thing from, from the very first story that he wrote was fired. That's unusual. It's unusual for that a, a, a coach departure to be characterized as he's fired. But he was. So what happened? Did, was there some one event? You know, there's been these rumors of he was mad at somebody in a restaurant. I've checked that out. People tell me, no, that didn't happen. So as far as I can tell, yes, it was, it might have, I was told that what kind of kicked it over the top was this, his inability to bring Jackson player in from from Tulsa. You know, he'd gotten, gotten this kid out of Waco and got him to Tulsa. And supposedly Sam Pittman was like, you can't bring a player to Arkansas that you got to go to Tulsa? What's wrong here? Now, you talk to Otis, and he explains that that kid is from Waco, pretty close to the stadium, didn't get offered by Baylor out of high school, had a chance to go back. Sure, that's where he's going, but from what I'm told, it was that's the one area where they still have a need, and they still may bring in a defensive player tackle nose guard type because they still have a need there they they've done an amazing job through the portal and recruiting of filling needs but i think there's still an issue there on the d line and mike that's been the most unstable unstable position on that coaching staff and we went through all the names with ashley and going back guys like john scott jr you go back to to when steve colwell and bobby allen had it a decade ago there's been eight different coaches coached the the defensive tackles or defensive ends um that's an area where arkansas needs someone that can go into a third and fourth season because a, a, you know a, an all-star like roy segrist was the guy out of that group of, of names that's lasted the longest and you're never going to get better if you keep changing coaches there and, and that that's especially a, to me a tough position into barry odom who likes these three-man pass rushes that are just puts tremendous yeah. pressure on the Boy. down linemen. Uh, you know, those guys, had a, had, they weren't bad. They were good players. You know, Trey Williams and, you know, they had a nose card that came in and just surprised everybody. Uh, come on, it wasn't bad, but it, it, the numbers weren't necessarily productive from a pass rush standpoint. So... You know, you ask who they're going to bring in. I'm going to assume it's another young coach. Might not be, but I, I don't think it's going to be Ed Ogeron, which everybody would love. But uh, I think it'll be a young coach, similar similar type situation, reputation as a recruiter, represent, reputation as developer of talent, and maybe they, they just hope they strike gold this time. But one thing we know about Sam Pittman doesn't work out. Hey, make another change. Barry Odom told us in a Zoom in early 2020, somebody, it was probably Bob Holt, you know, with those Bob Holt, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> uh, he's a great guy to work for, right? <laughs> it was back when this Sam's a great guy stuff is going around. And Barry Odom laid it on the line, he said, in a staff meeting, let me tell you something, this guy gets it done. And if something's not working, he's going he's gonna to fix it. So... You know, I I just, again, I tell fans all the time, do not worry. I don't care what happens. Don't worry. I, if if K.J. Jefferson hit the portal, I would still tell him, don't worry. They got a plan. Mike Irwin, Pig Trail Nation, with us here on the Morning Rush. Mike, on before we touch on basketball, to y'all's questions and comments about defensive tackles, uh, this is a great piece from Danny West of Hog Sports. Arkansas has the least amount of four-star composite defensive linemen on the team. Vanderbilt has more. Think about that. Arkansas has one four-star composite defensive lineman on the team. Vanderbilt has two. Alabama has 12. That really puts it in perspective. (laughs) Think about that. That really puts it in perspective. Again, a great piece of tidbit from Danny West of Hog Sports. Mike, you touched on this a little bit and asked, asked Mike, and there was a recent article written on Sports Illustrated about Bud Walton kind of losing some of its luster. Do you think Bud Walton has lost a little bit in these last couple of years? 
I think it lost luster over a long period of time with, with frustrating seasons and, and losing games and things like Look, Bud Walton, here's the thing about Bud Walton. Unless you want to go back to the first three or four years where they were national champs, national runners-up, you never fill that thing up the whole time. What you've had is if you play a Kentucky or whoever's hot that particular season and you play them on the weekend, you can still put 18,000 in there. 19-3 is tough. I was amazed that they had 18,000 the other night. This is A&M. Yeah, A&M's better than they were, but this is not Kentucky. This isn't Auburn. Now, it was on a weekend, but you just you had a three-game winning streak, but you before that you lost five of six. And it takes fans time to process things like that. So I thought it was a great crowd. You got a couple of games coming up. Uh, you've got an Auburn game, and that doesn't look good for putting 18,000 in there because it's on a Tuesday night. But later on in February, you've got Kentucky on a weekend. It's a Saturday, I think, at 1 o'clock. You might could put 18, 18, 5 in there. And here's the key, guys. This is where it gets, this is where it gets to 19-3. You've got to be ranked, and you've got to be up there. Mm-hmm. And I think Musselman can do that. And I'm very concerned and continue to say this. The word behind the scenes is that Hunter Urechek has been convinced by these Jeff Longies, these people <laughs> he still has working for him, oh, we got to put skyboxes up there. we got to get rid of that upper deck. It's never full. If they do that, they are losing something that you will never get back. The difference between a 14,000 uh, crowd and an 18 or 19,000 crowd and I've seen them both, and it's a phenomenon when they fill that, that place up. When you have a huge game and it's full, I hope they never do that. And I hope Musselman gets the chance, maybe with Kentucky, to see what it's like. He's already seen it with A&M, but it'll be more intense with Kentucky if they continue to win games. But next year, especially when you bring in this recruiting class, you get ranked, you're up there approaching the top ten or maybe in the top ten, you put maybe even 20,000 people in there when you got all these people that come in and just kind of watch because there are people that can figure out ways to get in there that yeah. work for the U of A. That is, yeah. that is special. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that place. Razorback, the, the difference between 14 and 18 or 19 fringe fans, these are the people that don't normally go to a game, but they'll go if it's a big-time game or if the team is really good. These aren't particularly intense fans, but they put you over the top if you can get them in there. And I, I don't want to see them lose that. Yeah. Mike, Tommy, uh, go ahead, yeah. Tommy. I was like, last one for me here, uh, Mike. Y- y- you mentioned the recruiting class next year. Nick Smith Jr. and Jordan Walsh, two of five outstanding recruits, both named McDonald's All-Americans. It's been a long time since that's happened at Arkansas. Uh, does that give you some flashbacks to Nolan's recruiting? What what kind of expectations should we have as a fan base? What should they have as a fan base next year, having uh, recruits at, at this high level and two McDonald's All-Americans coming in? Spin it forward for us a year, uh, year, and what should people expect? Well, I've watched these guys on, on video. I've not seen any of them in person, but uh, they're players, both of them are big-time players. One's are just a very physical, he's the power forward they don't really have right now. And then, you know, you're talking about a guard that can score and do just about anything. So I, I just think as time goes by, you're going to see Musselman's recruiting, you know, a top, it's a top three, top four class. If he continues to do that, then you're going to see an excitement around here <clears throat> that even goes above where it is now. And I think people excuse me, really positive because of a lot of things, football, baseball, it's all falling together. And, <clears throat> you know, Sam Pittman is, is starting to do things that people had not thought. I, I've told people, Frank Boyles was the last coach here that really, really, really recruited at a top level. And look what he did. In the 60s, they won a national championship with no facilities, and they almost won two others. If you recruit, you can you can win, and he Sam Pittman is after that, and, and Eric Musselman's ahead of him on that. He's already down the road, and we know what 
what happens with baseball. I mean, every year now, they're a top two, top three program year in and year out. So there's never been a better time, in my opinion, to be a Hog fan. Mike, we got about a minute and a half left with you before we let you go. It is What's Your Beef Wednesday. I know you used to love to do this. So as we close you out here on the morning rush, do you have anything that's been aggravating you as of late? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I heard you guys talking about having, <clears throat> having female bosses. I got a great female boss. She's 40 years younger than me. And... I have just been in a good mood lately, so I, I'm not mad about anything. When you've got a good boss, when you can relate to that boss, when, when her thinking is your thinking, and look what she did here with this arrangement we've got now. She's very progressive, forward thinking, so you're coming to work and you're in a good mood. What gets me mad is when weird stuff happens at work, and you're just going, what in the world is this? I don't want to deal with this. So lately, I've had no complaints. Mike Irwin in a good move. There's there's some breaking Alyssa news for Orange. you. There you go. <laughs> Take a bow, man. Hey, she's got a thing coming up this afternoon on NIL. You guys want to, this is a this is a big deal coming. People have been upset because Arkansas is sitting there with their little one million NIL trust fund or whatever, and <clears throat> and has got this thirty million thing, and we're told it's about to change. So we'll see. Yeah, I've, I've been kind of keeping that under wraps. We might close down the show with it and talk about that because that, all that stuff is, is hitting the fan today. Mike, I know this is early for you, so we really appreciate it. That was fantastic. Football, baseball, basketball, you can do it all. You've been doing it for, like, what, 46 years? Am I right on that? 46, this is my 46, 50 years overall. I, I, I still can't believe it. Well, it's it seems like just yesterday when I was walking around going, what am I doing? Well, Arkansas is happy to have you. Mike, again, thanks for waking up early, man, and we'll do this again soon. See you guys. All right, great stuff from Mike Irwin of the Pig Trail. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile wagering to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's B L E A V. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas. Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts.